Where's Jason? Come on up here, please. You have your name. Okay, so so I just want to talk to you just for a couple of minutes, and then I'm going to do something different. So, so you got out of prison what year? 2011. And <laughs> 2011. So that was what? That was eight years ago. Yeah. So, um, and when did you, when did you get saved? 2000, Christmas time in 2006. 2006. And you went to prison after that? 2009, yeah. 2009. And so, and in prison, you met with the Lord. It was the day that uh, what happened to me is what happened. Is when I, the Holy Spirit talked to me. And I started getting visions, and then all this stuff started happening. I didn't know what any of that stuff was, but I do now. Yeah, so, <laughs> so, so you've been on a um, crash course learning and growing. Yeah. And, and so since you've gotten out of prison, you've been to seven different nations. Yeah. And you're getting ready to go to Peru. Or six. This will be the seventh. Six, this is the seventh. Yeah. Peru in a couple of weeks. Yeah. And so, um, so you went to the nations to preach the gospel. Yeah. And to heal the sick. And so, because healing the sick is the dinner bell. It's the dinner bell. Yeah. You know, um, uh, Jesus called it the children's bread. Yeah. Healing. Amen. It's the kingdom of God at hand. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so anyways, so you've learned a whole lot about, about, um, Functioning in uh, walking in the Spirit and in um, ministering the grace of God and the healing of God to other people. Yeah. And so basically, that's what you do all the time. Well, I mean, that's I'm, one part so far. I mean, casting out devils too and starting to prophesy and growing in that too. So, so you just, you got the full meal deal. Huh? Well, well the, the, Jesus is the example. That's what we're all growing into. Okay. We can do everything he did because we got the same Holy Ghost as he did. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so good. So, but faith is like a muscle. If you don't exercise it, it won't grow. Like they say, Arnold, Schwar Arnold Schwarzenegger has the exact same amount of muscles as the rest of us. He just exercises his. And same thing with us. The more you step out and the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the stronger you get in it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so I, I, I want you to... Um, Take a few minutes and just um, um, exhort, teach, you know, um, the basics of the, the things that you've okay. been learning over this time. Yeah. And, then, and then at random, as you feel like the Lord wants you to, I want you to call up some different people okay. and begin to activate them okay. in what you're doing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Right. Praise the Lord. Yeah, because it's, cause it's what was it, 2014. Every time I'd read my Bible, you know, when you guys read the word that Holy Spirit highlights things, and what I mean by highlights, like you're reading it, and it's like all of a sudden there's a brand new verse there, or there's not, but it is to you. He's just putting it in there, highlighting it to you, you know. So every time I read my Bible for about nine months, somebody was getting healed in it every time I read it for nine months, you know. And it was the one for, I was like, really? I mean, every freaking day I read it, it was happening. Then he led me to these other people I watch on YouTube. I didn't swear, did I? <laughs> Did I? No. Oh, yeah. You know, you know, I used to say the F word every other word in my life. When I was in jail, God shut my mouth, and I wouldn't be able to talk three words, but I was getting ready to say the F word. He straight took it out of my mouth. Yeah, it, it lasted. It did, he did that for about two months. I'd be talking to somebody, and all of a sudden, my mouth wouldn't move. I was just looking at them, and they're looking at me, and I didn't know what to do. I'd walk away. And he took, he took it out of my mouth, you know. So, so, but, so after seeing people getting healed for like nine months, and then it went to... Um, he had us watch on YouTube, on YouTube, uh, Torben Sundergaard, Thomas Fisher, Todd White, and Peter Cabrera Jr., and they're all doing the same things from all different parts of the world, praying for people with the same results, just like Jesus. And then we started going out in the streets doing it, and it took like two months of consistently praying for people, probably 20, 15, 20 times a week without seeing anything happen. And then it was about two months or three months, and then all of a sudden, the first time it happened was at Pike's Place Market. 
or some lady with crutches and prayed for her knee, and Jesus healed her, and she freaked out. And then it happened for probably about three months, and then it stopped for about nine. And I was still praying for 20 or 30 people a week during those nine months without seeing anybody healed. You know, but then Jesus sent people afterwards that did get healed. I just didn't see it immediately right there. They said, right, and I walked away, all the pain left. So the reason why I'm saying all this stuff is because, you know, people have said that I have the gift of healing or miracles or faith and all that stuff, and I don't know about any of that because that's not how the Holy Spirit taught me. He taught me the signs of a believer because in Mark 16, it says, it says right here, Mark 16, You guys probably heard me say it a million times, but I want to read it so I don't mess it up. Because, Mark, if you want to get your pen out, you should, like, circle this verses, you know, because this is the kingdom reality truth, whether you believe it or not. Heaven's waiting on us. It says, all the creation groans for the, or all the creation is groaning for the earnest expectation for the revealings of the sons of God, Romans 8, 19. So in Luke, I mean, in Mark 16, 15, because Jesus, if you read, because this is the thing, if you read what Jesus said when he came to his disciples after he rose from the dead, and he came and talked to them, he says the same thing in John, Luke, Matthew, he says in Mark, he says the same, not the exact same words, but the same thing pretty much. So in Mark 16, 15 through the end, he says, and Jesus said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, and he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. So do you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and was resurrected the third day? So you're a believer. So the first sign is, it says here that, that, that uh, you'll cast out demons. And then you get down to the bottom and say you'll lay your hands on the sick and they'll recover. So there's that one. And then in uh, Luke, or uh, no, yeah, at the end of Luke, he says to go wait in Jerusalem and you'll receive power on high. At the end of Luke, I think it's not in Luke. It's uh, 22, I think it is. I can't remember, man. You called me on the spot, Pastor Bob. It's 24. <laughs> it's Luke 24, 46. 46 through 49. And this, then he, which is Jesus, said to them, Thus it is written, as it is necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise the dead from the third day, and that he repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name to all the nations beginning at Jerusalem, and you are a witness of these things. And behold, I send the promise of the Father upon you, but tarry into the city of Jerusalem until you are endured from power on high. And what happened when the, the Holy Spirit fell on them in the book of Acts? They all had the tire, the flames of fire on their head. They all spoke with different tongues. And then after that, their lives were all different. You know, and then because it says that in Acts 8, it says, you know, Philip went down to Samaria. And if you read it in the Amplified Bible, it says Philip the deacon went down to Samaria. And then it says he did great mighty signs and wonders and demons were coming out of people. People with palsy or paralysis were healed. And it says the whole, the whole town came to Jesus because of that. You know, so then in, and then in uh, Matthew 28, at the end, he says the same thing. Matthew 28. cool part is, is you don't even have to know this stuff, but it's still real, whether you believe it or not. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Holy Spirit's really inside of you if you're born again. The kingdom of God's really right here all the time, waiting for us. As it says in Hosanna 4, 6, it says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You know? So in 28, Matthew 28, 18, and Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all the things I've commanded you. And, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So he's talking to the 12 disciples there, and he says in the last verse, he says, teaching them to observe all the things I've commanded you. So if you go to Matthew 10, he talks about things that he commanded them. But there he said to go in all the world. So in Matthew 28, or Matthew 10, I mean, Matthew 10 Verse 1, he says, And he called his twelve disciples to him, and he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of diseases. And then he names off the names of them. And then you get down to verse 5, and he says, These twelve Jesus sent out and commanded them. So here's the commanded word. He said, Teach them to observe all the things I commanded you. So here's the commanded part. 
And he said to go, do not go into the way of the Gentiles, but, and do not enter the way of the Samaritans. But in 28, he changed it. He said to go everywhere. But this is, you know, this is progressive. This is, what, 18 chapters before, but it's still a part of what he commanded him to do. So then as you keep going on, he says, but go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. But he's, you know, he said to go to everybody. And then in verse 7, it says, as you go, preach the kingdom of God is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the leopard, raise the dead, and cast out demons. Freely you receive, freely you give. And then in John 20, 21, Jesus said, Peace be unto you. As the Father send me, I send you. So the whole purpose, not the whole purpose, the whole purpose of Christianity and the Bible is for us to be redeemed back to our Father and have a relationship with him, and then to go destroy the works of the devil just like Jesus did. Yeah, well, we get to go do it when, on purpose. Because yesterday I was in, after we came over there, and then we went and got the salmon, and we went to... With the Fred Myers, and if you buy the whole thing, it's only three dollars a pound, and then they slice it up for you. So we got like eight pounds for thirty something bucks. It was a really good deal. But then the lady at the register, I'm sitting there, and she's she's getting ready. I'm sitting there just watching her. I'm not getting any words of knowledge or anything, and she's getting ready to leave. She says, well, "I'm getting ready to switch out," you know. And then I'm just looking at her, and she's getting ready to leave. And she ringed us up last, and then I go, "Hey, you got pain in your lower back?" I just guessed, you know. And she goes, "Yeah, hurts really bad." I go, well, can I pray for you real quick? She goes, sure. So I just, in Jesus' name, I just command all pain to leave right now and back to be healed. In Jesus' name, pain get out. I go, check it. Does it feel any different? She goes, it is better. And I go, oh, and I pray again. And I prayed again the second time. And then she goes like this. She goes, oh, my God, what's happening? I mean, she freaked out, dude. And she stuck out her arm, all the hair standing up on her body. The, the presence of God just landed on her, and she was instantly healed right there. You know, and then I got to tell her, I was like, you know why this happened? She's like, I go, because Jesus is crazy about you. You know, I mean, yeah, you know, I mean, this is what we get to do is talk because we, we are ambassadors sent from heaven to represent heaven with all authority of heaven. You know, and it's the kingdom of God is at hand because that's what he, when you first started showing me to do that here, you gave me the visions, and, you know, visions. So if you go to the book of Daniel, chapter 4, I think it's verse 2, it talks about King Nebuchadnezzar talking about the visions of his imagination while he laid on his bed. It terrified him. But for us, it's not terrifying. We're just born again believers, <laughs> you know. But the visions of your imagination, it's in your mind's eye. Because just like how we have five natural senses, we have five spiritual senses. You can see in the spirit, hear in the spirit, feel in the spirit. You know, I mean, there's, you have all the same things, you know. And then Jim, James Gall talks about the sixth one called the knower. I've never heard anybody put language to that, but it happens a lot. I'll just look at somebody and immediately know what's wrong with them. It's, it's the Holy Spirit, you know. So I'm talking about all this stuff, and it's going to start happening in your lives. Or it already is. You just didn't know what it was called. You know, somebody walks past you, and a random thought pops in your head, left knee, back, or whatever. It's God wanting you to step out in faith to ask them if they need prayer. You know, and then he says obedience is better than sacrifice. So even if, it, you know, I mean, he's just looking for us to step out. Like, like Graham Cook said, there was a little kid that was, had his hand on the, on the couch and was like a year and a half old and the moms and dads are going, come on, can you walk, can you walk? And the kid's all wide-eyed and scared and it takes like two steps and then it, it falls on the ground and crawls to him and then the parents don't it, pick it up and beat it with a the belt. They pick it up and give it a big old hug and then put him back and say, do it again. That's the same thing with heaven with us when we step out and start doing these things. They're not looking for perfection. They're looking for your heart and your willingness to lift up the name of Jesus and advance the kingdom of God. You know, I mean, it's, it's like don't sit there and look for the perfection part because... That will mess you up. Oh, I blew it. I should have said this and that. And all those thoughts that run through your head, just don't worry about it, man. Just keep going, you know. And then um, so those visions that were happening, when they used to have this, and then um, we used to be able to preach for like five minutes, like what was it, two years ago? You could share testimony or preach or whatever. So Holy Spirit kept showing me specific people to say the same message and say who's got pain and sickness in your body. Stand up right now. God's going to heal you. And then... Uh, to have that person, he showed me to pray for him. And then uh, he showed it to me like five times. I didn't want to do it, man. It was just like pretend like it didn't happen. You know, and it was over like a month and a half. So then finally when I was doing it, I was sitting in the chair, and I was moving closer and closer to the podium, and my heart's freaking pounding out of my chest, and I'm keeping a straight face. And then one of those uh, angel feathers that I've seen at other revival meetings came and landed right on my knee right here. Right there. Yeah. I've only seen, I've seen three of them so far and been in meetings where you see them all over the place, you know, the angelic activity. You guys have probably never heard nothing like that, but I've seen all sorts of crazy stuff, man. 
walking with God. And the more you're stepping out doing this stuff. Then this other, this other, in school, Chris Volaton talked about how that if, uh, he gave this analogy that if the master architect drew up a big, huge building and gave you the blueprints, and then you have the subcontractors come, and then the drywall guy says, or the electrician guy goes, no, you know, I don't want my wires hidden in the wall anymore. I'm going to put my wires on the outside. I want everybody to see my work. And then the foundation guy goes, you know, I don't like my stuff hidden either. I want to build my you know, walls up higher. And then all these people just started doing things differently than the plans. You wouldn't hire those people. You would never give them a job. That's not the way it works. And that's the same thing with us. We want heaven to come and manifest, but we don't do it the way he said to do it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, he's waiting for us to go talk to people and pray for them like Jesus did. We go, oh, come, God. Oh, come. He, said, he gave us the way to do it. You know, he's waiting for us to go do it, man. And then, like I said, too, it's like don't get beat yourself up. I mean, I've prayed for – it's happened so many times now that praying for people – they, whether I see it or not, it doesn't matter anymore. But in the beginning, it will mess with you. I'm just saying, you know, it'll try to get in your head and all that stuff, you know. Like, oh, man, there must be something wrong with you. No, there ain't nothing wrong with you. As a matter of fact, everything's right with you. You stepped out in faith to lift up the name of Jesus. So, so the reason why I'm saying all this is because if you're born again, it says the kingdom of God is at hand. And that means that, well, like when Jesus he says he preached the gospel of the kingdom, talks about that, I think it's in Matthew chapter 4, and, the re and w when he talks about that, it says that uh, that means the rule and the supremacy and the reign of heaven over earth, because he said, and you know, pray this way, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So anywhere in any situation you walk into, if you see something that's not like heaven, then you are the, called as the ambassador, the priest, and the king to stand in the gap and to pray and, and to bring heaven down. Called, actually called and chose you, according to John 15, 16. We didn't choose God, he chose us. So, I mean, I mean I, I, this stuff gets me excited, man, to the point where, I mean, I, I will go by myself and just go intentionally go, go look for people to pray for. You know, the most I've ever seen Jesus healed, it was 35 people in an hour and 15 minutes. You know? And then, and, then, and then it's not just about healing. It's, you know, we get to do all this stuff. So we're constantly growing, you know, I'm just growing and prophesying. And then I want, want you know, this guy gave me a word. I'm going to see, uh, I'm going to have a big deliverance ministry too, I guess. But it says here in, in uh, Matthew chapter 4, I was just reading this this morning, 23 through 25, it says, and, and Jesus went about all of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of sicknesses and all diseases among the people. And then his fame went up throughout Syria, and sick people who were afflicted and tormented, and those who were demon-possessed, epilepsy and paralytics, and he healed them. And great multitudes followed him from Galilee and from Dilopicus and Jerusalem, Judea, and beyond to Jordan. Man. <laughs> you know? Uh, so has anybody got any uh, pain in their body right now? Somebody's knees hurt? Your knees hurt? What? Yeah? Really? Really? Yeah. Yeah. There's been meetings where they had a whole bunch of them flying around and they never came down. It just disappeared. About four hours over flying around. I mean, but we don't seek that stuff. We seek Jesus. That stuff just happens as a byproduct. And everyone's asked for, God, send your angels today. You know, I mean, yeah. But has anybody got pain like in their knee or their back? You do? What's up, bro? How long is your, what's going on? Oh, my knee just blew up. It just blew up? One day when I was walking when I was a kid. Yeah, a long time ago then. Yeah. <clears throat> Years ago when I was a little boy, um, I was walking, just walking, playing, and, and my knee exploded just out of the blue, and it, sp it sprayed blood like six feet for no reason. And so I don't know. So, so this is so like this isn't the way, but so you so you say come up to somebody, what's going on, man? Oh, your knee hurts, and they say I usually go, well, how long has it been like that for? So you said since a kid. So then I ask like on a scale of one to ten, how much does your knee hurt right now? 
I'll, I'll know when I walk around for a little bit. Okay, but I mean, just like, is it like a five or a two on a scale yeah, of one to ten? It's about five right now. Okay. Yeah. So is there anything you can't do with it? Like you can't bend down, you can't? Um, I, I know I can't jump. Okay, which I, knee is it? I, I've also got, I've had uh, seven surgeries on my right foot. Okay. Um, and I've, anyway. Okay. I, I'm a, I feel which, like I'm a wreck. <laughs> all right. What's, what's your name, man? Rob. God bless you, Rob. So which knee is it? This one. Come here, Murphy. Come here, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Just stick your hand on his shoulder. And say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Knee. Knee. Be healed. Be healed. Every bone. Every bone. Line up. Line up. And function as it was created, knee. And function as it was created, knee. All pain go. All pain go. Now walk around, Rob. See if it feels any different. Try to do something. Just be honest. Don't lie. Is it the same? Any different? Can you tell any difference? You what? Did you when you came up here? Yeah. Well, come on, man. There it is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. Yeah, Jesus, man. Yeah. Murphy, did you feel anything when you prayed for him? Yeah, I don't either, dude. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes, like, the whole presence of God will break out everywhere, and, but most of the time you don't feel nothing. Is that the first time you ever prayed for somebody and seen him healed? No? Oh, that's all right. Keep doing it. Yeah. <laughs> so, does anybody else? What's up, Abby? Come here. See, but the reason why we're doing this isn't because it's Monday night, and then this is what we do on Monday night. This is what we do every day. Wherever you're at, you see somebody walking like that, you walk up to, hey, how are you doing today? What's your name? Abby. Well, what's going on, Abby? You got pain in your body? Yeah. Where? What happened? I, I got an uh, infection in my hip. Is it still infected right now? No. But, but, it's, but what's, is there, is there like pain in there or something? Yeah. I need a total hip replacement, partial pelvic reconstruction. I have no acetabulum. Do you know what that is? No. It's the head of the femur. Okay. So on a scale of one to ten, how much does your hip hurt? Five to six all the time. How long has it been like that for? Two years. Okay. Uh, here, you can hurt. Yeah, and stick your hand on her shoulder okay. and say, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus hip, hip, be healed. Be healed. Pain, pain, get out. Get out. In Jesus' name, all pain go right now. All pain go right now. Try it. Just, just be honest. See if it's any different. <laughs> no? Okay, well, pray again. Come on. I prayed for one person <laughs> nine times. You just keep praying until it gets weird. You'll know when it's weird because they start going like this. They don't, you know, it's time to stop. <laughs> you know? So in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus hip, hip, you'll be healed right now. You'll be healed right now. All pain go. All pain go. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. Okay, now try it. Same? Any different? The same? Okay, well, sometimes too, you know, I mean, it doesn't happen in the immediate moment. Like Malcolm, I prayed for him. He was, he was pushing a walker. And then I go, hey, bro, can I pray for your back? He goes, go ahead. Everybody else has already prayed. And nothing's going to happen anyway. So, okay, I just pray for him real quick, like five seconds. And then he walked away looking exactly the same. And then he said two days later, he was in his bed. And he rolled over and his back popped. And it was the most excruciating pain he's been in. And then it popped again. And then now he don't walk with a walker no more. Two days later, though. You know? Yeah. Yeah, so the reason to do this stuff, and then, I mean, not only is what Jesus said we can do, but after this, then it's real easy to lead people to Jesus. You got their full attention. Yeah, yeah man, it's fun. I like it, man. I mean, I, I didn't get saved until I was 32 and never went to church before, so I, I, I never heard that God don't do this stuff no more or anything like that, you know? And it's like he lives inside of us. You know, and we only have this little bit of vapor of a life to give to Jesus for his glory, you know, and it's like, what are we doing with our life? I mean, he says, you must lose your life to find it. So that's what I did when I came out, of, when, I, when he came and revealed himself to me, he had my full attention, and I put every, all my stuff on the side, man, and been going after him since 2009, you know, and then I never asked to go to another country, and, and I never, I didn't pay for it either. God paid for all of them, and to go to school. Since, since 2015, he's given me, I think it's like thirty-four, dollars $36,000 through people, which is amazing, you know. But that's, I mean, dude, that stuff, I mean, you know, and then too, when you go to these other countries, 
It's like, you know, I think the reason why he did it is because we were already doing it. And when we go, it stick out like a sore thumb, too. You have all these other people who come, and then they're like, they don't know what to do, and, you know, and it's easy. It's just like that. You walk up to people, hey, how's it going, man? You know, Jesus loves you. And they just ask me, you got any pain or sickness in your body? You need any prayers today for anything? And then, and then, and then I'd always stick with all the good, good stuff out of the Bible to tell people good verses because God's good. Nahum 1.6. You know, I wouldn't, wouldn't tell them they need to stop this or that or whatever. It's always just telling them who they are in God and how much Jesus loves them and what the good things of the Bible and the present. And Holy Spirit would do all sorts of things, man. There's this one lady, too. I was walking down the hill from SeaTac, and uh, she was sitting in the grass. And uh, I go, hey, you know, Jesus loves you. She goes, yeah. And I asked her if uh, she had any pain or sickness in her body. And she said no. And I was like, man. You know, I was like, I was just going to see Jesus heal a bunch of people. I go, is there anything else I can pray for? And she said, goes, yeah, we pray for Jesus to deliver me from drugs and alcohol and for, and for me and my boyfriend to quit fighting. I'm like, okay. So I just, Jesus' name, Lord, I was praying. Um, you just bless your, your daughter here, God, and deliver from drugs and alcohol and, re, and help her with her relationship. And I can't remember everything I said. And I walked away and I said, God's got your name written on the palm of his hand. He numbered every hair on your head. And I can't remember all the stuff I had. It only lasted like three minutes. And I walked away, and then it was like a year and a half later, I was in this conference at Seattle Revival Center, and my friend Bob comes up to me and he goes, hey, Bob. He goes, hey, Jason, do you remember Lily? I go, no. And then, uh, and then she comes up, and her face is beaming like Christmas time. She's like, you don't remember me? She goes, I was the girl that was sitting on the grass, and you came by, and you asked if I had any pain or sickness in my body, and I said no. And you prayed for Jesus to deliver me from drugs and alcohol. And when you walked away, the presence of God landed on me. And it hasn't ever left since. And three days later, I went to jail. And I've been sober ever since. And I'm on fire for God and Teen Challenge. And then, and then now she graduated from that. And she's in Los Angeles leading other groups to go into the same thing that she was in. Because she just did a big shot of heroin and meth and was in sex trafficking. You know? It's like, oh, man, I don't know, man. I don't really think you guys understand the ramifications of how powerful your words are and who you are in the kingdom of God and how much God's great love for you, you know. I mean, it's freaking mind-blowing, man. You know, it's like God wants to use me. I mean, I used to be a freaking construction worker, ditch digger, meth head, alcoholic, pill pot, all that stuff, and that's not who you are, because it says if anybody is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. And I died on the cross with Jesus. I've been co-crucified with him, co-resurrected, co-ascended, co-seated in heavenly places, you know, and filled with his spirit. And it's not based on a feeling. You know, so they encourage you guys that wherever you're at in your workplace or at the bus stop or wherever you're going, know in the back of your mind that you can pray for things and they're going to change, whether you see it immediately or not. You know, and get busy doing it. It's fun, man. You know, in the beginning, I mean, it wasn't fun for me. It was a challenge to go talk to people. I was really scared to death to give people a track. You know, just a piece of paper. It was terrifying for me. You know, and then it, then it took a few months, and then it was to say, God bless you, and then Jesus, and it was just a progressive pressing through the fear of man is what it is. You know, but this is, it says in it was John 17, 17, Jesus said, sanctify them with truth. Your word is truth. So every word in here is true, man. Uh, and then he told me, too, before the work is, he is. So he wants us to spend time with them in his word and prayer, not just out there bombing people of Jesus all the time. It's good, but he still wants us to spend time with him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's more to it than that, but that, that's a really good one. And, and, and uh in Matthew chapter 4, when he says that, and Jesus went about preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of diseases among the people. He says that even demon-possessed people were healed, epilex, parallax. It's awesome, man. Yeah. You see this crazy stuff in the prisons, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Jason. Um, um, praise the Lord. So, first of all, there's probably some people here who have not been born again, don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, and um, it could be something was said tonight that sparked you and you feel like you want to. If that's you, raise your hand. Just want to give you an opportunity. Don't want to keep anybody from. 
uh, eternal life with God and from the exciting life that he has for us here and now. Amen.